I welcome you once again to our math class. I'm Uncle Ed. Today, we will talk about graphs of sines and cosines. This is, this is actually a topic under a larger topic or a broader topic we refer to as trigonometry. So in case you need to get materials, please search in materials for width of trigonometry. Let's proceed. The graphs of sines and cosines are simply, for instance, the sine graph is just plotting the values of sine of angles. But first of all, we have to get the values of sine theta, where theta could be any degree, any number. But in this case, we usually allow a gap of 90 degrees, an interval of 90 degrees. So the graph you're seeing is actually a graph of sine theta from minus 360 degrees to 360 degrees. In most cases, if you ask the plot of sine graph, your values are going to fall under this range. So it's important. It's important. It's important. How do we get the values? We use a calculator. Punch on your calculator. Sine. Open bracket. Minus 360 degrees. Close the bracket. Equal to what you would get is zero. So we simply mark the point where 300 minus 360 degrees and zero intersect. And that is the first point. We move on to minus 270 degrees. If you punch that on your calculator, following the same process, what you would have is one. So we go on and on to the third point, to the fourth point, to the fifth point, sixth point, seventh point, the eighth point, and the ninth point, which is 360 degrees. Now, once we get all our points, we simply join the points in curve-like manners to have this undulating wave. One characteristic of the sine graph is that it passes, the line passes through point zero. So if you're asked what makes a sine graph different from a, cos, a cos, cosine graph, the sine graph passes through zero. It's very important, very, very important to take note of that. Over to a cosine graph. In similar form, we get the cosine values of cos theta by simply punching on the calculators from minus 360 degrees to 360 degrees. So we get all the points, punch on your calculator, cos, for instance, cos 90 degrees. What we get is zero. So we simply mark the point where the horizontal meets with 90 degrees, where the vertical rather meets with 90 degrees. Remember, cos 90 is zero. So that's how we virtually get all the points that you see. We join this point up till the last point to get the wave. The characteristics of this cosine graph is that it does not pass through zero. You see the blue line, which is our graph line. It doesn't go through zero. That's what makes it different from the sine graph. Let's take a quick look at our classwork for today. This is very simple. It says draw the graph of y equals 2 sine x plus 3 cos x 
That is the equation. Then it says for zero degrees less than or equal to x less than or equal to 180 degrees at intervals of 30 degrees. So in most questions, you're going to be given the interval. In this case, it is 30 degrees. And we're plotting to ensure that x is between 0 and 80 degrees. So we are not exceeding 80 degrees. That's very important. So we start from 0 to 30, 60, 90, 120, 150 to 180, which is the limit. Also take note of the interval. We used an interval of 30 degrees. Now, from the table below, we have the values. How do we get the values? I'm going to take x to be 30 degrees, for instance. The second row of the table shows us the equation that guides that row. So we have 2 sine x. When x equals 30 degrees, we have 2 sine x. So we simply substitute 30 degrees in place of x. So what we get is 2 multiplied by sine 30, where sine 30 is 0 0.5. So 2 multiplied by 0 0.5 gives us 1. Right? Yeah. For the second row, 3x, 3 cos x guides the values in that row. So where x is 30 degrees, we simply substitute. 3 cos x becomes 3 multiplied by cos 30, because x is 30. So 3 multiplied by 0 0.866 gives us 2.6. Calculator cos 30 is going to give you 0 0.866. Now, the la final value, which is y, is actually 2 sine x plus 3 cos x. We have 2 sine x as 1, and we have 3 cos x as 2.6. So when we add that up, we have 3.6. Remember, we are only following the equation. So when you follow that for each row and column for each angle, you would have a complete table. So next on, we simply plot the values of x, or rather y against x, where y is the, the vertical axis and x is the horizontal axis. So same with the way we plot, we plotted our sine and cosine graph. At point angle zero, we have y to be equal to three. So we place a point there. At angle 30 degrees, we have y to be equal to 3.6. At angle 60 degrees, we have y to be equal to 3.2. At angle 90, we have y to be two. At angle 120, we have y to be 0 0.2. At angle 150, we have y to be minus 1.6. And at angle 180 degrees, we have y to be minus 3 degrees. We get this point and simply join them in a curve-like manner. If we use the French curve, or whatever would help you get the curve very well. It's very important. Make sure you do not use a straight ruler. Is that clear? All right. I want to believe that you've gotten it very clearly. You have any questions, you can send a feedback to us. You should also note that when plotting your graph, take note of the angle intervals and do not ignore the negative signs. Sine theta, for sine theta, the negative sign tells us that the angle is in the third or fourth quadrant. While for cos theta, it tells us that the angle is in the second or third quadrant.
Here's your home exercise for you to take. Complete the table and plot the graph of the function y equals cos x plus 3 sin x for the interval 0 degrees less than or equal to x less than or equal to 180 degrees.